Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to Occlusion Culling. This is one of the most important 3D problems of all time, and simultaneously it is also one of the most difficult 3D problems of all time. Nobody, and I mean nobody, not the big fancy next generation game engines, not crazy research theories, no one has had a good solution to this problem, really, until very recently. Very recently, there's been a couple of pretty decent answers to this, but before that, it's sort of just a couple of bag of tricks that only kind of worked some of the time. So yeah, this is a tough problem, and that's why I'm going to be doing a little bit of a mini-series on this, on why it's so important, on what makes it so difficult, and how you can create a genuinely good solution to this in just about every situation. So, in this particular video, I'm mostly going to be introducing the problem. I'm going to talk about what it is, what makes it so important, and why exactly it's so challenging, at least a little bit. And then, in the next few videos, I'm going to talk about some of the different solutions to this problem, why those aren't the solution, why they go horribly wrong in some instances, and then I'm going to show you, eventually we're going to work into the big new ideas, the ones that actually seem to be solving the problem. As far as writing the code and implementing it goes, though, that's going to be part of a separate upcoming series, and I'll be linking to that when it comes out. So yeah, let's go ahead, let's get into it. So, what is occlusion culling? Well, the idea of occlusion culling is deceptively simple. The whole concept is to remove objects that are hidden behind other objects. And I'll show you an example of what I mean. So let's say this represents a 3D scene. This right here is the camera for our 3D scene. This pyramid represents the camera's field of view, so all objects within this pyramid are within the camera's field of view, and that includes these five objects. All five of the objects are at least partially in the camera's field of view, so if I was looking at the scene through the camera's perspective, I'd see five boxes lined up with some perspective distortion and overlapping a little bit. So what if I added another box right here? Well, this box from the camera's perspective, this box is completely hidden from view by this other box. So this box is occluded, and an occlusion culling algorithm would look at these boxes and it would recognize this. It would say, hey, this box is being occluded by other objects, and it would say, okay, you don't need to bother or consider, you don't need to even consider trying to draw this extra box, because it's being occluded and it won't contribute anything to your scene anyways. So you only need to draw these five boxes. And that's, that's the idea of occlusion culling. It's removing objects hidden behind other objects, usually for the purpose of speeding up rendering by only rendering objects that actually contribute something to your final image. But this is deceptively tricky. I mean, in this case, it isn't that hard because there's only one object occluding one other object. But uh, the truth is, a whole set of objects collectively can occlude an object. Because consider this. This right here is what I like to call the occlusion zone. Taken together, all of these boxes will completely hide anything within this occlusion zone. So it doesn't matter what is drawn here, or what is here. I mean, you could have the freaking blob back here, and it doesn't matter because it is being hidden by some combination of objects. And occlusion culling the blob is definitely not trivial, because taken individually, none of these boxes hide the blob from view. But taken together, taken collectively, they do completely hide the blob from view. So the truth is, you'd have to have some interesting coding to figure out, hey, this blob actually completely hidden from view. So, we can mark the blob as occluded. We don't need to draw the blob. And then we can remove him from rendering. 
and just draw the six boxes. So that's the idea of occlusion culling, and that's a little bit of a taster as to why exactly this is such a difficult problem. But wait a minute. Why do we care? No, actually, why do we care? I mean, sure, it saves you a few extra things you'd normally have to render, but so what? There's loads of techniques to speed up rendering. Why is this particular technique so important, especially if it's so difficult to pull off? Well, let me show you. So I'm going to show you three different hypothetical game scenes. Scene one looks like this. Three boxes. Lamest game ever. <laughs> but the point is, this is a pretty low complexity game. You only have three things to draw. And without inclusion culling, that's what you do. You just draw all three objects. But let's say you want a fancier game than just three boxes lying around. So, obviously, being the incredibly inventive and creative game designer you are, you create more boxes. And now you have nine things to draw. <laughs> so this is your medium complexity game. Just more boxes. But what if you want something even more complicated and detailed than that? You want a bigger game world. More details. So, of course, you add even more boxes. <laughs> and now you have 27 objects to draw. You might have noticed there's a little bit of a pattern going on here. The bigger and more complicated your game world is, the more things you have to draw. So in other words, the performance of your game without occlusion culling is directly proportional to how complex your 3D world is. And, uh, that, let me just say, as a game designer, that's bad. That's really bad. Ideally, you want your game to run awesome, no matter how big or complicated your 3D world is. You want total freedom to do whatever you want and not have to worry about whether that's going to make your game slow to, to crawl because it's too complicated. But what difference does occlusion culling make to this? Does it even make a difference? Well, let's look at these scenes again with occlusion culling enabled. So, we look at our amazing game of three boxes again. Go figure, we still have three boxes in our simple game world. But what about our next one? You might notice there aren't nine boxes here anymore. There's only seven boxes. That's because these two boxes, the ghost boxes, they're actually occluded from the camera's view by the boxes in front of them. So, Hey, occlusion culling saves us a couple objects to draw. But as your intuition suggested, this isn't a huge deal. At least not yet. But let's look at the extremely complicated and detailed 3D world. This is what it looks like with occlusion culling enabled. There's only 10 objects this time. Just 10. And that's because all of these boxes all these ghost boxes, all of them are occluded. All of them are hidden behind other boxes. So we don't need to draw any of them. They're, yeah, they don't matter. They do not contribute anything to the final scene. So this is why occlusion culling is such an important technique. Without occlusion culling, your, the time you take to draw your 3D world is directly proportional to how big and complicated your world is. With inclusion culling enabled, it's only proportional to the logarithm of world complexity. So yeah, adding more world complexity will still make your game run slower, but it's on an entirely different scale. You could, for all practical purposes, you can make your 3D world as big and complicated as you want, and you don't even care. This is why occlusion culling is such an important and desirable technique. If you have occlusion culling and it works well, you can do whatever you want in your 3D world. You don't have you simply do not have to care that much about how it's going to affect performance because hey, 
performance is not pro directly proportional to world complexity, it's proportional to the logarithm of world complexity. Now, that example I just showed you might get the idea across that, sure, occlusion culling can make a huge algorithmic level difference in your game performance, but is that true in general? Or is that just in those few special cases where occlusion culling happens to be a good option? Well, let's look at the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is every single pixel on your screen is the freaking blob, because the blob is a big, complicated mesh, and it's there in every single one of the millions of pixels on your screen. In fact, there's not just one blob everywhere on your screen. There is a small army of blobs at every single pixel, just huge, complicated bits of geometry every single pixel. Does occlusion culling really help in this situation? Well, first of all, something you have to realize is in a real game engine, you're going to have a level of detail. So you won't be drawing the blob at every pixel. You will be drawing, ideally, just two triangles or something equivalent that just fills in one color for the pixel. And that will be what's every pixel. Granted, that's still not exactly good. You don't want every single pixel to have its own individual mesh, but it's certainly not drawing an army of blobs at every pixel either. So there you go. And once you have that, it's pretty clear that occlusion cone is going to recognize and remove anything behind it. And really, you can't cheat the system. If I try drawing something else, then either the pixels are going to get occluded, or that new thing's going to get occluded by these pixels. So you can't beat the system. So really, in the worst case scenario, your performance is proportional to screen size. It doesn't even care how big or complicated your world is. All that matters is you have all these different meshes every pixel. Your performance is pro directly proportional to screen size. Sort of. There's a small caveat to that, because technically the logarithm of world complexity still factors in somewhere in that equation, and theoretically that could be more significant, but uh, I've had trouble coming up with an example that, where, at least a reasonable example, where that would actually be the dominating factor. So, for practical purposes, you consider you can consider your performance with occlusion culling to be proportional to screen size. And that is awesome, because that means if you can get your game running at a certain resolution, then you can basically do whatever you want. You can go cr absolutely crazy in building your game world, and things are pretty much going to be okay. So, now you should have some idea of what occlusion culling is, and why this is a very important thing to do and do well in a game. But how would you actually go about implementing this? What sort of algorithm could even begin to do this successfully in real time? Find out next time. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.